In this chapter, we're going to be focused specifically on slope and the rate of change. And in this lesson, we're going to look at slope as a rate of change. Okay, so in this lesson, everybody, we're going to take a look at slope, but we're going to think about it as a rate of change now. Okay, um, and you're going to see that this is a really, really useful tool. And you're already sort of familiar with this anyway. When you think about, for example, rate of change, probably the most um, obvious one is speed. Okay, meters per second, kilometers per hour. Well, that's written as a as a ratio. And if you were to look at that kind of on a, on a graph, whatever, it's it's a slope. Okay, it's basically just a slope here. So the slope of a line segment, let's refer, uh, re kind of refresh our memories on this one, is a measure of the steepness of that line. And we comp uh, it's created by creating or creating this ratio here of the vertical change to the horizontal change. So slope is rise over run. Now, on the coordinate plane, when we have a line on there, there is a formula that we can use that makes this a little bit easier for us to calculate. So rise is calculated by subtracting the y coordinate. So let's say you've got two points on the on the grid here. I don't know, let's just say we've got a point here and a point here. And let's call this A, we'll call this one B. So the coordinates of A would be X, and we'll just use a little subscript A down there, just so that I know that that's, that's the X that goes with A, and then it'll be Y A. And over here, this will be X B comma Y B. If I wanted to figure out the slope of that line, what I might do is create a triangle here. Okay, and the slope would be the rise over the run. Well, the rise is going to be the difference between those two y coordinates. However high up this is, minus however high up this is. So this is going to be yb minus ya. Over here, the run is going to be the, the difference between these two. It's going to be this x coordinate minus this one. So it's going to be xb minus xa. And that's going to give us that, whoops, that distance that we need across here, the run. So there's my rise, there's my run. So if I've got this line segment AB and I want to figure out what the slope is, this is the formula that I'm going to use. It's going to be YA minus YB over XA minus XB. Now you'll notice that my, my letters here are, are backwards to what we're seeing here, but it doesn't really matter. As long as the point that I pick here, like the A point or the B point, whatever I choose, I choose its coordinates come first, and then the second point here comes second. So this is point A, this is point B. Okay. The, one of the more common mistakes people make is they'll go X minus Y, X minus Y, or, or Y minus X, Y minus X. But they compare the, the coordinates of a point uh, over top of each other. So they, they go X minus Y, X minus Y, something like that. It needs to be Y minus Y over X minus X. Okay. And then I pick one point to be the first point, and then my other point is the second, the point that shows up there. So the slope of a line segment contains three important bits of information, okay? So rise and run, and then, and this is something that we've hinted at before, didn't really talk a lot about it, but I kind of threw this out there. There's also an indication of the direction, and that's given by the sign on it. A negative, a negative in front there means more specifically that the graph is dropping as you go to the right. Now, there's a couple of ways to think about that, but usually we associate the negative with the numerator, although you don't have to. But that's just a, a, a convenient way of doing it. And so I would think about it like this. A, uh, a negative rise over run would mean from this point right down here, I drop down one and then go over four. And so meaning that I'm going down as I go over. A positive slope, let's say one over four, would be starting here. I would go up one for a run of four. Okay. So here's negative and here's positive. So knowing this, knowing the rise, the run, the direction allows for some pretty easy graphing. And graphing is important because it helps us visualize uh, things. It makes, it makes some of the, the problems that we work on in math easier if we can see it. So here we go, some things that you need to know here. So the slope of a horizontal line is gonna be zero, okay? So straight across, this has got a slope of zero. The slope of a vertical line, straight up and down, is undefined. And that's because if I take two points on this line, okay, and this is going to be my, let's say, this is my point A, this is my point B, this is going to be my XA, comma, YB, this will be, sorry, A, why did I do that? 
xb comma yb. The thing is, my x coordinates are exactly the same. Okay, they are ex whoops, wrong way. They are exactly the same. And so when I plug this into my slope formula, and let's say I go yb minus ya over xb minus xa, well, because these two numbers are the same, I'm going to get a zero underneath there. And I cannot divide by zero. That is undefined. That's why a vertical line has what we call undefined slope. And then just as we were talking about before, if a line goes up to the right, it's got a positive slope. And if the line goes down to the right, it's got a negative slope. So those are the things you got to remember here. Okay. And actually, they're on the, the next page in this one. So zero slope, undefined slope, positive slope, negative slope. All right, now let's take a look at some examples. All right. So let's figure out the slopes of these line segments here. Now, and we're going to do it by counting. Okay. So here's my line. Now notice it's going up. So actually, I'll give myself some room here. So my slope of EF, first of all, I want to note that it's going to be positive. I can tell right by looking at it because it goes up. Now, let's figure out what my, my rise and my run are. Let's make this little triangle here. Let's connect those. And so now my my rise, it, the easiest way to measure the rise is to simply go from this corner here where the right angle would be. Let's go up. So from here I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I've got a run, sorry, run, a rise of 9. And then here, coming over here, starting here, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I, I have a rise of 9 over a run of 6. Now those are each divisible by by 3. And if I divide those both by 3, I get 3 over 2. Now, that suggests to me that I've got a that that line can also be written as a with a slope of a uh, rise of 3 and a run of 2 here. So starting here, if I go up 3, 1, 2, 3 and go over 2, ah, look at that, I'm back on the line. So that's true. That's a simpler way of writing it up 3, 1, 2, 3 over 2, and I'm back on the line. Yeah, so that works too. Here, slope of gh, I can tell you right now it's negative. Okay, just because it's dropping down. So I know my value is going to have a negative sign here. Now, let's draw that triangle in there. Whoops. Let's draw that triangle in. So here's my right angle. So starting here at the corner, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3. So this this got this rise of 3, which actually is more of a drop than anything. And then my run was going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9. So negative 3 ninths here. So... Both of those numbers have a have a factor of three in them, so I can divide that out to get negative one over nine. Whoops, negative one over three. Sorry, I just got distracted by something I saw out the corner of my eye, and so I wrote that wrong. Negative one over three. Now, if I start at g here and I follow this negative rise over run here, if I drop down one over three, and look at that, I'm back on the graph. From there, I go down one, one, two, three. I'm back on the graph. So yeah. That can be simplified down to be negative one third. So now, draw a line segment with a given slope, four ninths. Okay, well, I want to give myself some room here. So let's say I put a point right there. It doesn't really matter where I start, but I want to give myself some room. To get a line with a slope of four ninths, that means starting here, I would have to go up four, one, two, three, four. So I'm kind of building my little triangle here. And then I'm going to go over 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's where I would end up here. So I just need a line segment that's going to connect those two dots there. And there we go. Okay. And actually, I was supposed to draw a line segment, so I probably shouldn't draw, put those arrows on there. I could have just ended right there. But um, that would be more of a, a line segment if I get rid of those pieces there. So actually, I'll do that. Being, tech, being strictly correct on the wording there. Now here, negative 8 thirds. Okay, I'm going to drop 8 for going over third, uh, 3 here. So I, I don't know, let's, let's maybe start here. So 8 thirds. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm building my triangle. I'm going down and then I'm going to go over 3. 1, 2, 3. There we go. And then I'm going to connect those two dots there. Negative slope, I can see it's dropping to the right. I feel good about that. Looks good. And then finally here, determine the slope of a line that passes through those two points here. Okay, okay, here we go. 
So now I'm going to use my formula. Except I'm, I don't have the points A and B anymore. I've got E and F. But that's OK. I'm going to compare the, the Y coordinates over a comparison of the X coordinates. So I'm going to make Y, let's say, F minus Y, E. And as soon as I've made that decision, it doesn't even really matter which one I start with, but as soon as I've made that decision, that locks in what the denominator can be. This has to be X, F minus X, E. I could have done those in the reverse order, and then that would have locked in my denominator. Now, in this case, that is going to be 6 minus negative 5, so yf minus ye, over 8 minus 4. Now, you just, you just got to be careful with negatives. It doesn't matter who you are. You've got to be careful with your negatives here. So 6 minus negative 5 minus a negative becomes addition, so 6 plus 5 is going to be 11. 8 minus 4 is going to be 4. So my slope here is going to be 11 over 4. All right, now let's talk about slope as a rate of change. So a rate, like you're reading up here, a rate is a comparison between two quantities of different units. Okay. And usually there's some, uh, some real logic in, in the units that we're using here. So speed is a comparison kilometers per hour or distance to time, meters per second. Or you could have a rate of pay, for example. You might have dollars per hour, something like that. Okay? And we're all relatively familiar with that. So let's focus our attention right now on speed because speed is an, is an easy one to kind of get your head wrapped around here. So see, speed compares distance with time. And so we say that the distance traveled depends on the time traveling okay depends so this is how we we use the independent and uh sorry the dependent and independent variables here this is or where this idea of dependence and independence comes from okay basically what happens here is i'm deciding okay if if i'm going if i'm locked in at a certain speed if i'm driving at a certain speed i can determine how long i drive for that is going to determine how far I've gone. So I'm making a decision about the time that I'm going to travel. And that is going to, there, there is a dependence here. The distance that I travel depends on whatever that decision is that I, that I make here. So distance is dependent. Time is independent. Independent means I choose. And then this one here is the result of my choice. Okay, just to be clear. Now, if you're talking about this in terms of a, uh, like a science experiment, you might be familiar with this as well. The independent variable is the one that we call the manipulated one. So the manipulated variable and the dependent is going to be the responding. Just a little bit of different vocabulary for the same idea, totally the same idea. So when graphing, everybody, the, the dependent variable always goes on the y-axis. Okay, that's just how we do it. Okay, we could have done it differently, but we didn't. Okay, so you don't want to you don't want to mess with that because that's something that we all have a, kind of agreed to. That's how we're going to graph here. The independent variable is going to go on the x-axis, so that makes distance the rise and time the run, or the actually, probably the change in distance the rise and the change in time the run. Okay, and basically. In a lot of rates, you're going to see this, in a lot of rates, time is the independent variable. So in most cases, time is going to be the run. So therefore, the slope of the line okay, becomes the same as the rate of change or the speed. So your slope is going to equal your speed. So let's just take a quick look here. So let's compare a car traveling at 50 kilometers an hour to one that's traveling 75 kilometers an hour. So larger larger speed okay you can probably guess which line that is it's going to be have the larger slope here so notice that when this is what it says down here notice that when the rate of speed is greater the slope of the line is steeper that's because what's happening is you are covering more distance in the same amount of time in two hours the faster car travels a greater distance than the slower car that's just the way that goes all right let's finish this off with an example Okay, so let's read the problem here. Tom has a part-time job. 
He recorded the hours he worked uh, his pay for three different days. Tom plotted these points on a grid. So here are his points right here. So two hours, $24, four hours, $48, six hours, $72. Okay. So what's the slope of the line through these points here? Well, let's, let's draw that line. Now, this maybe miscommunicates what's going on here just a little bit, just a little bit here. It's, it's not like he's got all of these different things here where he, you know, I, I worked for 15 minutes, you know, 25 minutes sort of thing. Usually we block these off in terms of hours of work, right? But drawing the line through that actually just gives us a way of looking at the trend in the data because that's really what we're interested in. So what is the slope of that line that I draw through there? Well, let's just grab a point here and let's count it out. So to go from this point to this point, my rise to go from 24 up to 48, well, that's that's going up 24 and from 2 to 4 here, it's going over 2. So my slope here is going to be positive. Okay, it's an increase of 24 over 2. Now, when I reduce that, it's basically 12. 12 over 1, if you want to think of it like that. 12 over 1 here, but I can just write it as 12. But what? What is that? I don't understand quite what it means until I look at the units. And then the units really crystallize this for me. The units are money and hour. And because it's rise over run, it's going to be this unit over this unit. So this is going to be dollars per hour. In other words, probably the better way to write this, he's making $12 per hour. And that leads right into this. What does this slope represent? Well, as soon as I identify the units on there, that makes sense. This is his pay rate. Okay. And I might even put up front here, this is his hourly pay rate. So now let's use the slope in part B to determine the answer to a couple questions. How much would Tom work? Sorry, how much would Tom work? How much would Tom earn if he worked three and a half hours? Okay, well, right now he's working, or he's, he's making $12 per one hour. What I'm interested in is how much he earns, so the money. So I'm lo really looking at his rise over here over a run of 3.5. Well, let's figure this out here. Uh, basically, just like in, in previous questions here, what I have to do here is cross multiply. Well, 1 times x, I love that. It's just x. And then 3.5 times 12, if you work that out there, you're going to get 42. So that means in three and a half hours, he would make $42. Now let's look over here. We're still working with that same slope here. So $12 over one hour, $12 per one hour. How much time would it take for Tom to earn $30? Well, there's his money. We're going to put that up top here, 30 what we don't know is the, is the amount of time it's going to take. Well, again, we cross multiply and I love, I love working with the one here. I'm just lazy here and it just makes it easy. One times 30, that's going to be 30. And then 12 times X is nah, 12 X. For me to get my answer though, what I need to do here is divide both sides by 12. So 30 divided by 12 will be 2.5. And so therefore I know it's going to take two and a half hours for Tom to earn $30.